The story began when Jamin Yoon, age 15, was at his school. Gamin is horrible at reading. He sometimes acts like it does not bother him and doesn't think about it. But he is lying. He wanted to be good at studying. He tried many ways to get better, but his grades did not improve. He thinks it is because no one can help him at home. When he went home and saw his mom with a girl, Han King Lee, age 23, will be his new tutor. The tutor was introduced by his mom, who asked him to cooperate. It's already six o'clock. Gamin and his tutor are currently teaching how to solve linear inequalities. After two years, Gamin's scores improved because of his competent tutor and her friendly way of teaching. But the only problem he is currently facing is he is currently studying at the worst vocational high school and he is still bad at studying. His school is the Yusan Vocational Engineering High and was known as the School of Criminals. He is trying to study even though it is hard, but he wants to find that one person with the will to study in a school like theirs. His motto is to hell with circumstances, I create opportunities. He came to this school of his own free will. He finds it advantageous to study and raise his scores in a school full of gangsters. His plan is to successfully enter the university and be a real winner. Since their former homeroom advisor, Mr. Kang Jin Yu, who quit, was replaced by Ms. Han King Lee, his tutor from two years ago, will now be their homeroom teacher. Gamin reminisced about his time with the tutor, the one who believed in him despite his poor performance. Han King asked him what his dream was. He simply answered that he wanted to enter a university. His tutor, Ms. Han King Lee, wants to earn a teaching certificate and teach abroad. But the students inside the classroom were not listening. The man who introduced Ms. Lee to the class left. It only means one thing, she failed the certification test because she now works in private school. She started telling her rules, but a bottle went straight up to her face when she was about to tell it. It was thrown by a gang member, Inwu, who told her they didn't have time for her rules. The action spurred a fight that broke one of the classroom windows. Ms. Han King Lee could not do anything as she was so shocked. While they were fighting, another teacher went in their direction to stop their fight. Due to shock, Ms. Han Kyung could not move and was asked by the teacher why is she just staying quiet and just watching and added that temporary teachers like her do not have a sense of responsibility. Ms. Han Kyung left speechless and just cleaned the area. She hurt herself while cleaning the broken window. She could not help but cry, but Gammon offered a bandage for her wound. She was shocked because she did not think they would meet again like that. Gammon asked her if she would continue teaching at the school, but his optimistic mindset did not give up. She is very positive that those students can be on the right path if they will face the issue together. As the gang approaches, Gemin explains that Hyun Woo's gang is made of the most brutal thugs in their school and is not the type of person who listens to anyone. But he did not even finish his sentence when Ms. Han Kyung went in front of them and told them not to smoke. Hyun Woo obeyed her but then slapped her. Hyun Woo's gang was about to bully her, but Gemin realized how it would be advantageous for him to have Ms. Han Kyung if he was studying in that school. He interfered when one of the gang members was about to attack her. He fought with Hen Wu's gang. The thing that he has not mentioned before that his motto, to hell with circumstances, I create opportunities, are not his own words. It was from a good book that he was reading by Bruce Lee. It was a book about self-defense and kung fu. He knocked out the other member of Hen Wu's gang and even Hen Wu. The book taught him and inspired him to know more and practice kung fu. He wanted Ms. Hankin to not quit her current job as a temporary teacher because he is still bad at studying. From another point of view, the other gangs who know Hyun Woo are now preparing to revenge on him. Gamin went early to exercise. He was doing different exercises for his body. The guard watching him daily was still amazed at his body and how he could do those exercises. After knowing it had already been 34 minutes, he immediately went home since he sneaked out from his mother to exercise. The moment he went to bed was the exact time he was woken up by his mother to prepare for his school. On the other hand, Ms. Han Kim only slept for three hours. She comforted and cheered herself and kept being optimistic about her student's future. As she went to school, she could not help but be nervous after what had happened yesterday. Gammon entered the classroom with the mindset that he had to find someone who wanted to enter a university like him. As he finds the person who has the aura of someone who wants to enter the university, he finds Se and Kim to be able to enter a good university. He tried to approach him and asked if he could teach him some math but he realized that maybe he was giving off a won't enter university vibe too. But he didn't give up. From Saiyan's point of view, he sees Gamin as someone who will bring him down as a target of gangs. But due to his mistakenly assuming that the person in the bathroom with him was Gammon, it was Jawang Chu from the hydraulic engineering department. 
Zhao Wang commanded him to follow him. In the teacher's office, Ms. Hank Yang was scolded because of yesterday's fight. After being scolded, she left thinking that even though she reported that the children were smoking, they did not do anything about it and just ignored it. Even though they cannot do anything, they will ignore the children's bad habits. As she was passing by, she saw Zhou Wang torturing Si Yun. She hid and tried to watch what Zhou Wang was currently doing to Si Yun. She remembered Si Yun as one of her students and tried to interfere. But she failed to do so as she lost her balance and ended up sitting on the ground. She tried not to think about what had happened to her yesterday when Gammon held her hand and helped her stand up. And the only thing he can think of right now is that he cannot let Si Yun change schools because it will be hard for him. And he wants him to be a part of his study group. After hearing those words, Ms. Hank Yang was shocked that Gamin did not have his study group. Back when Gamin was a child, he often heard his mom's friend trying to make him have a study group after his son raised 30 points from his midterm exam. Her mom's friend explained that it is some sort of self-motivation by teaching each other and encouraged Gamin's mom to let him try it. But since Gamin was a shy boy, his mom thought it would be better for him to study privately. The truth is, the young Gamin tried to join a study group but his classmates rejected him because of his previous grade. After that, Gammon tried to join some of his classmates' study groups, but they did not want him to join because he was considered the school's dumbest student. Because of it, he realized that the more he was rejected, the more he wanted to join a study group. After recalling the trauma he endured in his childhood, Gammon was about to go and see Yen in Zhao Wang's direction, but Ms. Hank Yang stopped him. For Ms. Hank Yang told him it is normal for students to fight in school, but school is supposed to be a place to study, and violence will never be the answer. Gamin agreed that picking up a fight inside a school was wrong, so he thought of an idea. As Zhao Wang was about to attack Si Yen, Gamin made smoke envelop the place, and Zhao Wang noticed the fire extinguisher. Gamin snatched Si Yen away from Zhao Wang's sight and left the establishment through the back door using a mask used by welders to cover his face. Ms. Hank Yang did not expect what Gamin did. Si Yen started to ask Gamin why he did that, and asked if he knew the identity of the person who tortured him, Aka Zhou Wang. They called the Yusan Vocational High School, also known as the Four White Lead, because of the brutality of the White Lead Ancient Gang's executive children. But Gemin did not care because they were just a bunch of students who didn't want to study. He asked Sien to join his group study, but Sien rejected the idea, because one of the things that he hates right now is to be the target of those gangs. But even though Gamin has interfered, he will still be their target. He mentioned that his safety is the only thing more important than studying. But as Si Yen was about to leave, Zhe Wang found him by his phone tracks left when he tried to escape. After seeing him, Zhe Wang kept asking about the person who helped him escape, but Si Yen acted like he did not know him. Gamin knew that Si Yen was trying to protect him by covering up, but was secretly hurt when Si Yen didn't consider him a friend. Zhe Wang threatened him, but Gamin did not let that happen. He kicked Zhe Wang's face, which made him lose control. Si Yen was shocked and could not believe that the person who kicked Zhao Wang in the face was Gammon. After that, Gammon promised Si Yen to help him study without dealing with violence that could interrupt his academics. With that, Si Yen was given hope and an opportunity. After Gammon attacked Zhao Wang, he asked Si Yen if he could join his study group. Si Yen could not believe what he saw because while Gammon was talking to him, Zhao Hang kept attacking him, but Gammon kept dodging his attacks. Zhao Wang thought that Gamin was pretty interesting because even though he was talking to Sayan, he still managed to keep up with his attacks. They kept fighting, but Gamin got a grip on Zhao Hang's hands when he was about to attack Gamin when Zhao Wang got on the floor and realized he could not hit Gamin. Si Yan was shocked as Gamin easily handled Zhao Wang. That's when he realized that he could study and enter the university. He agreed to be one of the study groups of Gamin. When they heard the bell ring, they got out of the place and left Zhao Hang. He then heard a voice from behind. He looked around and saw Han Wolf Fit, the son of the White Lead's boss and an electric engineering major. He commanded Zhou Wang to stand up, and then Han Wolf Fai punched him. He then asked Zhou Wang who was stronger between him and Jimin. He was interested in Gamin because he wanted to know how long his determination would last. Han King Lee cleaned up what Gamin, Zhou Wang, and Saiyan left. She realized that Gamin was passionate about studying. Han King Lee cleaned the place before the caretaker went there. But when she was about to leave, the caretaker arrived at the place. And the caretaker questioned her about what happened in the lab as he noticed the place was full of fire extinguisher residues. The caretaker then suspected that one of the students did it and wanted to find out who was involved. Ms. Hanking Lee was about to insist that she did it. 
but a boy whom he didn't know appeared out of nowhere and insisted that he was the one who used the fire extinguisher. But as she watched the caretaker talk to the boy, it got her thinking about how he calmed down the caretaker and made him leave the place with Ms. Hank Yang Lee. On the other hand, Sayan started helping Gim in in his studies. He pointed out that Gam is very bad at his studies. Sayan asked Gam in how he became an athlete and learned physical exercise. Gamin explained that he only practiced and trained himself because he believed a healthy mind came from a healthy body, because he was really bad at studying. But Sehan gave a notebook to Gamin, which he calls a book of simplicity or keynotes. Gamin felt something behind his back that made him fall off the chair he was sitting on and the notebook that Sehan gave him. Jiaowang picked up the notebook and burned it. Meanwhile, during the inspection, Ms. Hank Yang was putting all the trash in the trash can when she was noticed by the school inspector, Tesu Park. Tesu Park asked Ms. Hank Yang if they had already met because he was familiar with him, but Sehin, running from behind, went to Ms. Hank Yang to report that the classroom was on fire. Ms. Hank Yang Lee immediately went to the place where Sehin said. Even though full of blood, Gammon tried to reach for the notebook that Sehin gave him but could not get it as Zhou Wang kicked him. Gammon tried to remove the fire that Zhou Wang caused while trying to dodge his attacks. When he saw Zhou Hang almost burn the notebook full of Sehin's notes, he attacked Zhou Wang. That notebook was the first help he received for his study, and Zhou Wang destroyed it. That was his last straw, so he counterattacked Zhou Wang when he tried to attack him with a burning bag. Gammon swung it back at him and kicked him in the face. Zhou Wang flew out of the room, almost passing out, and that's the exact time when Sehin and Ms. Hank Yang Lee arrived at the scene. But not only them, but also the school inspector from earlier also witnessed the scene. The whole faculty office of Yu Song Hai was distressed after the school inspector called about what happened in the school a while ago. They put Gammon in a room by himself. Si Yun went to talk for a bit with Gammon, even though he was not allowed to. Si Yun asked Gammon why he went that far for a mere notebook. Gammon explained that he had a problem when he tried to make some notes for his studies, but he could not make it since his handwriting was bad, and upon seeing Si Yun's notes, he thought he was willing to study. That's why he was pissed when Zhou Wang burned it. The vice president, the school inspector, and Ms. Hank Yang arrived at the room where Gamin was and saw Seiyun was inside. The vice president commanded Seiyun to return outside because he could not talk to Jimin. Gamin tried to explain that the person who started it was Zhao Wang. The vice president could not let the school inspector know what the problem was in the school and insisted that it was Gamin's fault for being physical. But this cannot let Ms. Hank Yang slide. She loudly told the inspector that the administrative system was bad in use on high and that if they removed Gamin as a student, she would protect Gamin as much as possible, even if she was fired. That's when Tasu Park, the school inspector, remembered Ms. Hank Yang as the top passing candidate for the teacher certificate last year. The director's son of white lead, Sangin Bang, visited the clinic to see Zhou Wang. He thought Zhou Wang was resting and sleeping in the clinic because he passed out while fighting with Gamin. But when he approached his bed, he was shocked by what he saw. On the other hand, the vice president insisted that they expel Gamin from the school, but Ms. Hank Yang Lee was doing her best not to make Gamin a candidate for expulsion. She pointed out that violence was never the answer should be what a teacher should teach, and that the school chose to ignore these problems, the students had no choice but to fight for them to survive. The vice president answered her, but the school inspector just laughed at them. The inspector was not surprised at Ms. Hank Yang's character as she was the top candidate that passed the teacher certification test. Gammon, the vice president, and Ms. Hank Young were shocked by what the school inspector said. Gammon was so happy that the wish of her tutor before had already come true. The inspector asked her if Yu Zhang Hai was the school she wanted to change. The inspector asked her how she could change Yu Zhang Hai in her way. She said that she would form a study group. She also credited Gammon for his idea. Since the inspector was satisfied with her answer and planned on supporting it, he left the room, went outside, and entered his car. In the back of his car, someone spoke. John Yao Park, from class 1 to 8 of electrical engineering. He is the son of the school inspector, Tesu Park. Back to Sangin Bay in the clinic, when he came closer to Zhou Wang's bed, he saw Zhou Wang tied in both hands, topless, and full of blood. Ms. Hank Yang and Gaiman are now making a poster on the bulletin board. The students who saw the poster laughed at it as it is impossible in Yushan High to study because it is full of thugs. Sigan passed by it and heard the other students' opinions regarding the study group. The next day, Ms. Hank Young went to where exactly Gammon lived. While walking in the neighborhood, she was passed by the guard who went straight up to the little park. 
and there she saw Gammon upside down, balancing on a seesaw. When Gammon saw Ms. Hankyun, he immediately lost his balance and fell off the seesaw. After changing his clothes, Ms. Hankyang and Gamin went to the library to buy books that Gamin needed to help with his studies. She got lots of books, and at first, Gamin was worried, but Ms. Hankyang Lee assured him that she would pay for all of the books because he helped her make the poster they put on the bulletin board. After getting the needed books, Ms. Hankyang Lee and Gamin parted ways and returned home. When Ms. Hankyang Lee was about to enter her apartment, she was shocked because there were strangers in her apartment. One of the people inside her apartment forced her to enter her apartment. They slapped her and physically abused her. Meanwhile, Gamin thought he must return to Ms. Han Kang Lee's house. Sanjin Bang asked Han Wool to kill whoever did that bloody thing to Zhou Wine. Only Sangin Bang, Han Wool Fai, and an unnamed girl were in the room. Sangin Bang is still upset about who did the bloody thing to Zhou Wine. Han Wool Fai pointed out that the only thing they had in common was their father's job and that Zhou Wine is not even qualified to be with them. Meanwhile, Ms. Hanking Lee's apartment was Hein Wu and his gang. You can remember them from the first part of the story, where they also physically abused Ms. Hanking Lee and had a fight with Gamin. When one of the gang members, Hyun Wu, grabbed Ms. Hanking Lee's hair, she started shouting and asking for help. Someone behind her door kicked her door and destroyed it. At first, Hyun Wu and his gang thought that the same guy beat them up to protect Ms. Hanking Lee, but he is not. The person who went to Ms. Hanking Lee's apartment was Jeon Yao Park. Ms. Hanking easily recognized him for helping her from the caretaker. Gen Wu made one of his member attacks Jeon Yao Park, and that's when he realized that Jeon Yao Park did not accidentally go by Ms. Hanking Lee's apartment. He knew they were there because he had a knuckle in his hand. While Jeon Yao Park was busy attacking and dodging the attacks of Hyun Wu's members, Hyun Wu blew a punch into his right ribs and abdomen, enough punch to impact Han Wool's body. Han Wool realizes that Hyun Wu also knew about the incident, and that's why he tries to calm down using his knuckle. He broke the glass and stabbed one of the members in the head. Using the situation, he and Ms. Han Kang Lee went outside to escape, but unfortunately, they were two teams who split up. In the nearby houses near Ms. Han Kang Lee's apartment, Gammon heard someone was after Ms. Han Kang Lee. As Joni Up Park and teacher Han Kiang Lee attempted to escape from her apartment, they got blocked by another group of Hyun Lee. The gang recognized her face like the picture they had of her on the phone, a pretty teacher in their school. Jeonyeov stepped forward to cover her from their sight so he could defend her. That's when the gang also recognized his face. They know him from Silwa Middle School, which surprised Jeonyeov that they might also know about his incident there. But for the delinquent member, Jeonyeov was just one of the few nightmares he had when they were young. Back in Silwa Middle School, Jeonyeov was the second in command then and had just recently transferred from America. Jeonyeov made him kneel before the first year students because he stole their money. Now that the second in command is before him again, he is determined to take him down and regain order from him. He launches himself at Jeon Ya, but counterattacks using the crowbar Hyeon Lee dropped on the teacher's apartment. Since this is now a fight of weapons, the other members pull their weapons, ready to beat up Jeon Ya. Meanwhile, Hyeon Lee and his subordinate keep with them, preventing Han Kion from asking for help. With nobody to defend her, he finishes his business with her as, but Gammon comes right on time to intervene. Gamin pushed Hyun away and casually informed his teacher that his book was in her paper bag, and he came to get it. Hyun got pissed and secretly teamed up with his subordinate to attack Gamin simultaneously. But even that isn't effective, as he split kicks them, knocking them both. Jeniab saw his move and got distracted that he got hit badly by the others, he was outnumbered, but Gamin was there to back him up. He took the gang's weapon, and Jeniab thought he intended to destroy it but he was surprised to see that he had made a nunchucks. One of the gangs sneakily attacks Gamin with a bottle on the side of the street, thinking he didn't notice it but easily cancels the attack, impressing Jeonyeov. Between the fight, Gamin asked him if he came from America, so he must be good at English. While the gang members back up arrived at the scene, Gamin casually stood his stance and asked Jeonyeov to join his study group. Earlier this morning, Gamin's mom was sneaking into his room and saw his to-do list for Saturday. She was proud to see that he was being organized and complimented him on being so diligent. But below her the list, there was a to-do written small, which was nunchuck training. Back to Gammon, he knew it wasn't the right time to talk about it, so he gave his paper bags to Jonyab and took them unintentionally before fighting the gang with his homemade nunchucks. The gang attacks him simultaneously, thinking they can take him down, but the ending is the opposite. 
Gammon handled the nunchucks well while Junya watched him speechless. He knows Jamin is different, but he cannot imagine that he is this skillful at taking down a group alone. Gamin continues to take down each gang until he knocks them all effortlessly. He looks at the nunchucks, but it's too wonky, so he cannot practice. Han Kyung rushed and checked on him to see if he was injured, but he was fine. Meanwhile, Jun Ya was finishing his business with Hyonu Lee and beating him up with no mercy. Gun Yeok can't leave him knowing he knows about the ancient Donggu Don't Ask murder case, according to the papers published last year. Gun Yeob assumed that Hyonu knew all about it since he was crazy about the White Lid Gang and straightforwardly asked him who the culprit was while threatening him. Hyonu won't say anything, so he threatens him again, saying that breaking into Ms. Lee's house shouldn't be taken easily without consequences. He pointed the crowbar to his head, threatening to split his skull, but Gamin interfered because he was going over the line. Gun Yeob told him that his mother had died, turned down his offer to join the study group, and asked him not to bother him and take the teacher home. What Gun Yeob told after mentioning the word murder goes past Jemin's ears, he is all fixated on the word murder. He can't even imagine how he would feel if his mom were murdered by someone. Gun Yeob asked him again to leave him or he would get hit, but he was surprised to see Gammon hitting Hayonu and pushing him against the wall. Gamin was filled with rage for what he assumed was a murder at the hands of Hayonu. Gunyab and Ms. Lee were surprised to see him taking his anger out on Hayonu, so Gunyab had to stop him. Turns out, Hayonu cannot commit murder because he doesn't have the guts to do so. Gamin quickly let him go, feeling dense. Gunyab explains to Dense Gammon that he can tell Hayonu is scared but acts tough in front of the crew when he is just a mere slave of Hanwol Pai's heel. If they didn't teach him a lesson, he would do the same act again, so he left the responsibility to Ms. Lee. For her, it is right to give him a just punishment, but Gunyab advised her that she shouldn't rely on just punishment, and he's saying that because she reminds him of his mother soon after he left. It took Gamin a while to remember who Hanwol P was, but before he understood it, Gunyab told him they didn't get along well since Gamin was too dense. Gunyab is intimidating, like a wolf dressed in sheep's clothing, but for Gammon, he looks too big for his britches. In the aftermath of the incident, Ms. Lee felt even more motivated to know where these kids went wrong and made them what they are now in the first place. Gammon got his book and was sent home, leaving Ms. Lee to handle the rest. Monday came, and a new obstacle was thrown their way. Ms. Lee informed the two study group members that they were ordered by the headmaster to recruit a minimum of five people or else, the study group won't have official support from the school. Gamin and Siyun felt hopeless because people only laughed at their posters. Gamin also suggested that it's all right if they won't go official, but Ms. Lee is too motivated to prove the headmaster wrong. That reminded Gamin that somebody had tried to contact her. After their small meeting, they went to Ju Lee's classroom. They can have a female member since Yuzhong Technical High is a co-ed school and the person interested in joining is a 17-year-old chemical engineering major, Ju Li. In the meantime, Ms. Lee called Han Wol Pai into her office to talk. Yushim Technical High is a co-ed school, yet both genders are thoroughly separated. Both genders rarely interact. They either get intimidated when a man is present or judge them hard, like how Gammon and Sehan are judged by waiting outside the classroom looking for Ju Li. They have a small argument whether who would call out for Ju Wu, and since Gammon is the group leader, he is responsible for doing it. But a few moments later, a girl entered the classroom looking for Ju Wu. At that moment, they thought they were lucky when they finally found out who Ju Wu was. It was an orange-haired girl, and the moment Seiyun saw her, he recognized her as Hyona's twin sister. Her reputation was as bad as her brother, so it was doubtful for Ju Wu to apply to their study group. So if her brother is a delinquent, Ju Wu might as well be one too but they were surprised to see her getting slapped by another woman, Mai Hee Wong. She asked Ju Wu about her math test, but she responded that she doesn't have to act tough and smack gum like it's the 80s. Ju Wu also bragged that Mai Hee Wong was only acting tough because Ju Wu has a good boyfriend, but Mai Hee only scoffs because her boyfriend doesn't even see her as a girlfriend. Mai Hee didn't stop there, she took the paper from Ju Wu's friend, Hyun Choi, and crumpled their midterm preparation plan. She was about to slap Hyun but got stopped by Ju Wu. She told Mai Hee to not mess with her and hit her instead because Hyun was tired from studying all night, unlike Mai Hee. Mai Hee was struggling with Ju Wu's grip and was embarrassed because other people were watching them. Before leaving them, Mai Hee noted to her that she should leave her uniform by her desk and clean up her makeup, and if she doesn't oblige, then her brother must pay back what he owes to Mai Hee. 
She spits her gum on Ju's midterm preparation plan, but Gammon intervenes by catching the gum with his finger. Gammon took the paper and read its content as he complimented Ju, not listening to Mei's question. After that, another man peeks by the door, which turns out to be Ju Jin, Ju's boyfriend. Ju Jin recognized him for beating up Zhou Wang and asked intimidatingly what he was doing with his girlfriend and challenged Gammon. But he remembered the day Niz Li was scolded badly for defending him, and he didn't want that to happen again. Without hesitation, he apologized to them and rushed out of the room. Since they already knew who Ju Wu was, they could come back later after everything was okay. Yujin was disappointed that he didn't get to challenge the infamous Gammon, but brushed it off. Gammon was sure that Ju Wu was safe since her boyfriend was with her now, but he heard Yujin ordering Ju Wu to open her hands, and Gammon stopped in his track. Ju Jin was embarrassing and threatening her girlfriend in front of her bully and her other classmates, but Ju Wu obliged so things won't get worse. Ju Jin slapped her palms with a ruler three times and told her she should be thankful he was going easy on her. However, he noticed gum on his hair as Gavin entered the room to intervene again. Gammon asked Ju Jin why he did such a thing to his girlfriend. He was impressed that Gammon had returned and was not a coward. After that, he grabbed his uniform and started a fight, but the team, Hyunul Kang, caught him because Ju Jin was late for the student council meeting. Students call him Tom Kench, and he usually gets cussed about by other students. After Ju Jin left, he was looking forward to seeing Gammon around. Whispers filled the room from other students talking about Ji Woo, which made her feel like crap, and she left the classroom. After the girls' classroom incident, Gamin and Sigan sit by the bench on the school field. Sigan was worried about Gamin's safety now that a student council had their eyes on him. It basically ensured his life in hell. Gamin admits that he didn't know Ju Jin was a student council and acted calm about it and reasoned that he could not stand by watching one of his members getting hit. Sigan was about to reply but they saw he one running toward them. She confesses that she was the one who applied under Ju Wu's name because she needed their help to save Ju Wu. Afterward, he one sat beside them so she could talk more about how it all started. Back when she was in middle school, he one was bullied and bad at studying. She's been carrying her trauma and somehow ended up in a scary school. Within a week, she was a bully victim again. But she met Ju Wu and helped her with her situation. They became a close friend, but everything came crumbling down for Ju Wu when his twin brother Hyonu borrowed a huge sum from Ju Jin. In exchange, Ju Jin takes videos of Hyonu assaulting someone and blackmails him with them in case he doesn't pay him back. Those videos are stored on a USB drive, which also threatens Ju Wu. She can't be mad at his brother since he is still a family to her. Therefore, he one asks for help from them to save her friend before she transfers to another school because of her father's job. He one begged for their help, but at first, they were hesitant with game and skills. It won't be a huge problem. First, they need to secure the USB. Meanwhile, back in Ms. Lee's office, she asks Hanwol what kind of person Hyonu is, but he doesn't have much to do unless he borrows money from his friend and about her sister. Returning to Gammon, he saw a fat man playing with the USB possibly containing the blackmail for Hayonu as he was waiting inside the student council locker, waiting for the right moment to attack. Before Gamin went to the student council's room, Sayan talked to him about how bad it was for them to get entangled with one of the student council members. Gamin seems dense and doesn't understand the situation, only focusing on retrieving the USB. That's why Sayan once again reminded him about the council. Their school council is filled with delinquents that use the title as a cover to comfortably keep the students and other minor delinquents in line. The council and its members are rumored to be Hanwol Pai's close friends. So basically, Hanwol owns the council. Hanwol's name surprised Hyun, so she was instantly scared. That's why Sayin pointed out that that was the normal reaction, not stoic. Sigan further explains that most students don't even go near the council room, let alone dream of entering it because if they get caught loitering near it, who knows what will happen. But for Gamin, knowing that nobody dares to approach the room is an advantage that gives him more confidence to go there. This surprised Sayan after doing his best to disinterest him about his motive. But Gamin defended his stand by telling him that Ju shouldn't be suffering under their thumb because of her brother's mistake, not allowing her to be the target of bullies like what happened in the girl's bathroom. They can't stop Gammon from being stubborn, so after that, Gammon hides in one of the lockers inside the council room. One of the members, Dohun Jung, was curious about the USB that Ju Jin owns, thinking that something pleasing must involve Ju Wu. Dohun wants to make a copy, not minding what Ju Jin would say, 
but as soon as he inserted the USB, ready to make a copy, Eugen and his friend returned from patrolling the school premise, complaining about Tom Kench. With a calm face, Dohan asked Eugen what the USB was about and what was inside. Silence engulfed them with confusion, but they suddenly laughed, understanding that Dohan was also a man, asking him if he was about to copy the content of the USB to use his way to Juwu. Dohan admitted it, feeling at ease because of their small laughter. But Jujin grabbed him by the collar and swiftly pushed him hard on the ground for acting recklessly with his stuff. Dohan must have thought that Jujin was calling him a pig because he thought he was cute, but he wasn't. Jujin's friend was merely watching them fight, thinking Jujin was amazing with his judo skill, but Jujin was pissed that somebody was touching his USB. Meanwhile, Gamin is still inside the locker, witnessing everything unveiled in front of him and knowing that Jujin doesn't leave the USB in the council room all the time. Before Jujin could eject the USB, he suddenly got the idea and the urge to do something reckless too. His friend thought they would just copy the video, but Jujin thought it would be more thrilling to post it on YouTube. This made Gammon freeze after hearing Jujin's dark intention to ruin someone else's life. Jujin's friend also reminded him of his promise to Ji Wu that he wouldn't spread it to the world if she listened. Yet Jujin heartlessly said that promises are made to be broken. It's pleasing to him thinking that Ji Wu would be in despair seeing her one and only family member left reviled across the country to get Juvi. Jujin's friend also supported it, knowing that the siblings were just orphans graduating from Yuzhan. They intend to kill Ji Wu's hope of letting her guard down. Jujin also pointed out that Hayonu borrowed Han Wu's money and not his, but he still had authority over Hayonu's sister. Gamin was getting furious inside the locker understanding that it was unfair to Ji Wu and remembering how Ji Wu's friend begged him to save her. Meanwhile, his group study subordinates are outside the student council, waiting for him, worried about his safety. Si Yin and Hee Wen devise a plan in case things would escalate badly inside. It requires Hee Wen to yell and make a scene so the council members would come out to check. That way, they're giving Gim Min enough time to get out. Si Yin told her she should call him names and cuss at him, but Hee Wen was hesitant refusing to follow him like she had never cussed anyone before. While the two were conversing about their plans, Ji Woon went downstairs and saw them. She was wondering where she had gone and didn't expect to see her with a guy. At Ms. Lee's office, Han Wool is stubborn and denies his knowledge about the problem, bravely telling Ms. Lee that she was wasting his time in Raymond. After that, he excused himself, pointing out that there are many instructors in their school, but no teachers who actually teach in their class. With that, he questions Ms. Lee's capability and passion for becoming a good teacher, calling it a fool. Ms. Lee kept her cool but didn't let anyone stomp on her, even if it was the fearful delinquent on the campus. She told him that if someone was on the brink of falling off a cliff, even if that someone didn't seem capable of any positive change, she believed that no one in this world should be given up. This belief is the same as Gamin's. Nobody deserves to suffer, so he wouldn't give up and won't mind a tiny ruckus. He barged from the locker and punched the council member, knocking him out in a single punch. Jujin didn't expect somebody to be inside their locker and took him off guard. Yujin called Gim Min a baby for hiding in the locker and waited. It got on his nerve, especially for being a council, keeping the stubborn students in line. But aside from that, he also assumed that Gim Min was only doing this because he likes Ji Woo. He pointed out that Gim Min was mad at them because they were calling Ji Woo bad things and since Tom Kinch was the one in charge, there was no reason for Gamin to attack unless he was a masochist. But he was just fixated on the USB driver on the PC, and Jujin was quick to pick on that Ji Woo must have told him to steal the USB, impressed that she was using guys to do her fight when she didn't really tell anyone. Jujin's friend stood up, wanting fair revenge for hitting him cowardly when he was off guard, so he charged at Gamin, only to get punched again. Gamin didn't mind that guy any attention and told Jujin that knowing you were wrong is the only way to learn first. That made Jujin pissed that he had had enough of him, but things were clear to him that Gamin didn't beat Zhao Wang out of luck, but only because Zhao Wang was weak. With that, Jujin challenged him to fight him fair and square, and whoever the winner gets Ji Wu. Gamin was confused because he wasn't doing it for Ji Wu only. But before he could do anything, Jujin gripped his uniform and flipped Gamin into his back reminding him he was far superior, making him worthy to stand beside the great handwall. Seeing Gamin on the floor gave back his confidence and told Gamin that it is tempting to have Ji Wu with her pretty face, but he's protective of his girlfriend. 
Gamin was lying down for a while and casually took the USB on the PC port, hiding it on his vest. It was part of his plan. That's why he let him flip him. Seeing that, Jujin rushed at him, wanting to stop him, but Gammon had a strong reflex and kicked him out of the way for him to stand up. It knocked down Jujin, and he cussed on his breath as he felt defeated that it woke up Dohun. Jujin kept attacking Gammon and tried to get the USB out of his hand, but Gammon grabbed a cloth and put it on Jujin's face making it hard for him to attack him since it blocked his sight. As he struggles, Gammon takes this advantage to punch him in the face, and as Dohun fully wakes up, he realizes that Jujin is weak, and that only means one thing, Jujin lost and Gammon won. Gamin left with Jujin and Dohan on the ground. But before leaving both of them, he reminded Junjin that Ju is not a price to be won. But Jujin still had the guts to move around and told Gamin that even though he had the USB, he already uploaded the video on the internet. Threatening him that with just one click, both Hanwu and Juu would suffer from gossip, and if the video which makes Hayonu a harasser, both would suffer from humiliation. He even mentioned to Gammon what dream Jiwoo wanted, and no matter what, if he released the video, they won't even fend for themselves on their own. With this, Gammon has no control over what might happen, wanting to attack again. But before he can, Tom Kench arrives, yelling at them for causing too much noise. Tom Kench glanced to his side and saw Gammon. He remembered him as someone who caused a mess yesterday, and as he looked at the room, he could not figure out what had happened to them. Gamin was in a hot seat, anxious that he couldn't charge Jujin in front of the Dean or else he'll be in more trouble. Jujin knew about it, so he took it as an advantage and uploaded the video on YouTube. Meanwhile, outside the council room, Jiwoo caught the two and demanded an explanation to which they obliged. They felt awkward, especially Hyeon, for doing it behind her back without her knowing. She already accepted that Jiwoo would be upset with her, but Jiwoo said it was okay. Since she's tired of always getting picked up on, she finally gains confidence and refuses people lashing out at her, remembering how she was always the target of bully, but can't do anything about it because of that USB. She apologized to Hee-won for showing her embarrassing side, but now if she can watch her beat them up. But as she walked towards the council room, Gammon suddenly barged out the door as Jujin was panicky, screaming at her to grab him. Jiwoo was caught by surprise that she was dumbfounded seeing Gammon running out with their PC. Three months prior, Jujin Kim is talking about Jiwoo and says she is his type. The guy warns Jujin that she's no joke, and she's beaten up several guys that have hit on her. She overhears the guys talking and asks if he wants to fight her. Jujin asks what school she applied to, and she responds with using tech. Jujin Kim introduces himself and tells Jiwoo that school will be much easier for her if she talks to him. She pretends to go for Jujin Kim, and he flinches. She asks if he is such a man, why did he flinch? She leaves with a smirk on her face. Jujin Kim tells himself that he'll get her back. Jujin Kim tries to upload a video about Ju's brother to get back at her. Suddenly, Gimin is seen trying to take the computer and run off. He unplugs it so the video doesn't upload and takes off while being chased. He sees Jiwoo in the hall and tells her to run while Ju has no idea what is going on. Gamin wants to smash the computer but trips and falls with the bad guys trailing behind. Gamin tells Sehun to take the computer to the lab and Sehun does what he's told. Sehun goes to the rooftop and decides he should throw the computer over so it can smash. Jujin Kim finds him and tells him to give it back. Sehun pretends he's going to give it, but instead throws it over his head. This gets Jujin very angry, and he charges for Sehun. Ju appears and starts beating him up. The computer finally smashes on the ground and Jiwoo is still fighting Jujin Kim. Jiwoo says she told him he would be the one on the floor next time and wonders if she should continue beating him up until she's satisfied. Jiwoo starts to slam Gyujin on the ground repeatedly. Seeing her brutal side, Cyan can't even get himself to move a muscle. She keeps beating up Jujin and making him admit defeat. But that doesn't satisfy her as she still must pay him back for making her life miserable for months. Ju uses Jujitsu to make a submission move on Jujin to dislocate his arm. Jujin desperately tries to escape and tells her that a judo athlete shouldn't use dirty moves. But Ju doesn't care about fair play as she only considers judo a hobby. She makes him understand that he shouldn't try to break someone stronger than him, as he will end up being the one who gets broken. The student council members run to the rooftop to see if he has defeated Ju yet, but to their disappointment, he is the one who is defeated. Jiwoo makes Jujin beg for mercy and promise that he will not show his face again to her or her brother. 
Meanwhile, the Dean Kench drags Gaiman to the staff room to give him a punishment for the troubles he has caused. Gaiman also happily lets Kench drag him away, as he thinks his plan of saving Jiwu has succeeded. But then he notices that he doesn't have the USB pen drive that has all the videos of Hayonu, so he thinks that he must have dropped it accidentally on the way. Hyun sends Ms. Lee a text disguised as Jiwu, telling her that she wants to meet her at the student council room, all according to Seiyun's plan. Hyun then notices the USB pen drive on the floor and goes to grab it. But her bully, Maihi, conveniently grabs the USB before her and notices that it's Jujin's. Maihi realizes that this is the USB that has Hyonu's files, so she runs away quickly to give it back to Jujin, thinking it would impress him. Hyun realizes that all their efforts will go in vain if she doesn't stop her, so she musters the courage needed to stand up against her bully and lands one good punch at her. The USB drive falls out of Maihi's hands, and Hyun finally gets it back. Siyin and Jiwoo see her punching Maihi and are totally amazed by her courage. The student council members carried Gyujin back to the room when suddenly Hayonu ambushes him with an intent to murder him. Ms. Lee notices that and steps in front of Jiujin to be his human shield. We see a flashback to two days ago when Hyonu got beaten up by Gamin and Gunyat for assaulting Ms. Lee. All the thugs retreated after getting to see firsthand what a monster Gamin is. As they were sent by Hanwol, they realized that Hanwol would punish them for messing up the task. Ms. Lee overheard the thugs, saying that Hanwol was responsible for all this and recognized his name. Apparently, Hanwol is the leader of a major gangster organization named Pale White. She asked one of her fellow colleagues about Hanwol and became shocked upon hearing that she could get murdered for even saying his name out loud. Since the school is always quiet about the gangsters, Ms. Lee originally thought that everyone just tried to cover up the problems happening here. But then she realized that the school trying to cover up everything has something to do with the organization called Pale White, and that explains why the vice principal tried desperately to hide everything from the school inspector previously. So one thing became clear to Ms. Lee, and that is that Hanwol and the Pale White organization are a bad influence here. She thought that Hayonu might have been influenced by Hanwol too. So she asked him if that was the truth, but Hayonu got too afraid to answer and began to escape. Gammon tried to stop Hayonu, but Ms. Lee stopped him, saying they could report him to the police at any time and get him easily arrested. But she didn't want to do that, rather she wanted to help him out. She promised Gammon that she would take care of Hayonu's case alone and then sent Gammon home. Right then, Hayonu's best friend, Hunje, ran into Ms. Lee, so she threatened to report him to the police. Hunje begged for forgiveness from Ms. Lee, so she gave him a chance and asked him what Hayonu was like. Hunje told Ms. Lee about the very beginning of their school years, when Hayonu wasn't good for nothing and was the top student of the class. Since he didn't have any parents, he was very attentive to his studies and never slacked off. But then he gave up on studying because of his twin sister, Jiwoo. The two twins lived in an orphanage together, but it closed because of an issue. The twins only received $5,000 each and were thrown out by the orphanage to live on the streets. So their dreams of going to college got ruined and they had no other option but to apply to Yusin Technical High School to survive. Over time, Ju became a foul-mouthed, abusive person, but on the inside she felt miserable, so Hayonu stopped studying and started to look for ways to make money. His initial goal was to financially support Ju, but there's not much a 10th grader can do other than work at criminally underpaid jobs, so he grew intolerant of everything and one day ran into Hanwol's gang. Hanwol learned about Hayonu's miseries, so he took all his money and put it in a gambling site and doubled it back to him. Because of that, Hanwol looked like a god in Hayonu's eyes, and he happily joined his gang. To be on Hanwol's good side, Hayonu got into many fights for no reason at the school and became a total delinquent. After hearing the story, Ms. Lee reconsidered her decision and forgave Hunja. The next day, Hunji reported another problem to her, telling her that Jujin scammed Hayonu and on top of that, abused Jiwoo. And if Hayonu learns about this, he may try to murder Jujin. That is why Hayonu is attacking Jujin. But his plan to murder Jujin has failed, as Ms. Lee has taken the damage. Still, Ms. Lee doesn't cry in pain after being stabbed in the gut, and she reminds Hayonu that his true dream is to study hard. She still thinks that if she can approach every student in a different way, she can help them follow the right path, and she takes an oath to take down Hanwo one day. Speaking of Hanwol, he enjoys seeing the incident and slowly walks away by walking down the stairs. 
A bunch of police officers run into him, so he thinks that they are here to arrest Hayonu. But the twist is that the police officers are here to arrest Hanwall. The leading police officer of Ancient Central Police Station, Taman, tells Hanwall that they need to interrogate him. Hanwall complies with the officers as he realizes that Ms. Lee is behind this and decides to make her pay for meddling in his affairs. Meanwhile, Gemin is still being dragged by the Dean, Kench, who brings him over to the principal's office, but the principal isn't interested in that and tells Kench to immediately call an ambulance. Getting back to Ms. Lee's being stabbed to death, she tries to tell Hayonu to correct his path and tells him to study. But Hayonu's mind has gotten blank because of the trauma of stabbing someone for the first time, and he can't hear anything that Ms. Lee is saying. Extreme anxiety kicks in as he wonders what will happen to him now. He remembers confronting Hanwol for trying to take advantage of him and getting his sister involved. But Hanwol manipulated Hayonu by blaming everything on Jujin and telling him to take revenge by giving him a knife. Hayan realizes that he has been completely contaminated by Hanwol, and there's no way for him to go back. He begins to give up on his life, but Ms. Lee tries again to reduce the contamination in him. She tells him not to worry and tells him about their first encounter, when she told her that she would help him quit smoking. She tells him that she will help him succeed in quitting the bad things and helping him change. However, Hayona doesn't fall for her kind words and starts running away, thinking that he will be sent to jail. Gamin comes there, lands a good punch on Hayonu, and tells him that the only thing that matters is the ability to reflect on yourself when you feel down. Ms. Lee gets up again to tell Hayonu that even if he ends up in Juvenile Hall, he can come back strong and continue his studies. She then reveals his aim in life, telling him that he can also be a teacher one day. She reveals that she went to the registry to get a deeper look into him and saw his career planning records too. It's true that Hayonu wants to be a teacher, as he too, deep down, wants to become a great person like Ms. Lee. So Ms. Lee again tells him to not give up on his dreams and promises to make the school a better place so that he can study. She ends up getting unconscious from bleeding too much, and the medical team takes her away. Hayonu cries, realizing what a great mistake he has made. But it's too late now. Ms. Lee turns out to be fine and only gets hospitalized. Gammon visits her at the hospital and promises her that he will fill the study group in no time. The next day, Sayan tells Jamin that the police came and arrested Hanwol. The reasons are unknown, but he hopes that Hanwol will get expelled. His hope is tarnished as Hanwol gracefully walks into the study group room and tells Jamin that he wants to join their study group. The day before the encounter with Hanwol, Ju goes to the police station and wonders if she can truly study at school after learning about the study group. She goes to the police station to see Hayonu and sees that the officers have bailed him out for free for now. Ju doesn't like their soft-hearted decision at all, as she thinks he should be at least sent to juvenile hall right away. She slams Hayonu on the ground and makes him realize that he acted like a fool, thinking he could gather money, and explains that she would never go to college with his blood money. So she decides to study on her own from now on to receive a scholarship to get into college and tells Hayonu to repent. Hayonu thinks that is impossible, but later, he one tells her that nothing is impossible and that a person should always stick to their goals. Ju, however, is more interested in where Hee-won is getting transferred to, as she has already heard everything from Seidun. Hee-won reveals that she is not getting transferred anymore as her parents are not going to leave this town. So she looks forward to continuing to go to school with ju -woo. The two girls decide to join the study group together, making it four people in total. They only need one more person in their group to get the school's full support. So ju -woo proposes to grab any random student in the hallway and make them sign the list. But then Han Wool comes into the study group room, saying he wants to join them. Even though he is a top gangster who doesn't care for anything closely related to studies, Sayan knows that Gemin will let him in as he wants more people in his study group. But Gemin proves Sayan wrong by rejecting Han Wool's proposal. Gemin explains that Han Wool doesn't look like a person who wants to study, let alone go to college. But Han Wool won't accept his decision unless he comes up with a better reason. So Gemin calls Han Wool a punk, right in his face, telling him that he doesn't need any more reason to reject him. Han Wool begins to smirk upon hearing Gemin's reason and tells him that he will feel sorry for it. Right then, the windows of the room suddenly break with flying bricks, and Gemin sees that some local punks are behind them. He realizes that Han Wool is the orchestrator of this, but since he has no evidence against him, his hands are tied. Hanwol tells Gamin about an unspoken rule that disallows students in different grades to engage in fights. But Gamin has broken that rule by beating Zhou Wang and Zhu Jin. 
and more freshmen like him are being influenced because of him. The rumors have spread that Gammon is the new big shot, so a revolt has started against him. A 10th grader named Teo, who is the number one ranked fighter in the school, even joins the revolt to end the controversy of Gammon being the strongest once and for all. Teo calls Gammon down for a fight, but it's clear to Gammon that it's a trap. So Teo goes blackmailing and brings a person named Jun, who has a similar mindset as Gammon and wants to change the school. Teo reveals that Jun also applied for the study group and proceeds to tear up the application. So Gammon jumps out of the window on the second floor to save Jun's dreams. A flashback shows Jun Lee beating up a guy to increase his delinquent rank to number 18. He notices that number 17 is right in front of him, so he immediately goes for him with the goal of becoming the strongest in his school and beating number one. But to achieve his goals, he needs someone's help. Coming back to the present, Gaiman lands straight on Teo's face and crushes him to the ground. Jun's face finally shines brightly as he reveals that he wants Gaiman's assistance to get to the top. Teo escapes Gaiman's grip by overpowering him and notices that rather than getting ready for a fight, Gaiman is busy reading Jun's study group application. Seeing that Jun's future goal is to take over Yusung High, Gaiman assumes that he wants to do so with his grades and considers him his competition. He then sees that Jun is the type to diligently study quietly, which makes Jumin suspicious. Teo can't take being ignored anymore, so he slaps the back of Gaiman's head and tells him that he should not ignore the guy who is the number one in this school. He also reminds Gaiman that he promised to destroy anyone who had that piece of paper in their hands. But before he can do anything about it, Gaiman turns around and smacks his face with a deadly punch. The damage is so severe that Teo immediately falls flat on the ground and becomes unconscious. That was a shocking turn of events. Gamin now becomes the first-ranked fighter among the freshmen, but he doesn't care about it. He tells Jun to come upstairs to register him for the study group. Jun excitedly follows him, as he can now learn everything and become stronger himself. Jun enters the study group room to find Saiyan, Juwu, and Hyun already sitting there. Gamin explains to them that Jun here wants to rule the school. The other three instantly realize that Jun wants to rule the school using his fists and not by studying. So they explain that to Gammon, and he rejects Jun's proposal to join the study group. Jun begs Gammon to at least hear him for once and whispers to himself that he wants to study too. Gammon somehow hears it, and so he lets him join. For his first task as a meritorious student, Gammon hands Jun a pile of books, telling him to study all of them before he and the group come back after visiting Nizli at the hospital. Jun doesn't know why Gammon is so crazed about studies, but Jun is prepared to take on anything to become an apprentice of Gammon. Jun starts working hard immediately, but then he is suddenly interrupted by a man in black. That man assumes that Jun is Gammon after seeing him in the study group room alone and tells him that he is the chief scouter of the UIB family. The man explains that since Gammon has reached rank number one for freshmen, he must go through a trial right now. Jun recognizes that the UID family is related to the notorious White League gang and realizes that this man is here to recruit Gammon to train him to become a stronger fighter for their gang. But Jun knows that this is too dangerous, so he sacrifices himself for Gammon's sake. The man in black takes Jun somewhere in his car and tells Jun that while his school stinks at being an educational organization, it is rather gifted at creating talented thugs. Jun wonders why this man, who is supposed to be the chief scout of White Lead, just took him in without suspecting a thing. He remembers one of his old acquaintances becoming a part of White Lead and plans to take revenge on him using this opportunity. While their car is on the way, Ju sees a glimpse of Jun while walking with Sehan and Hyun. Meanwhile, Gamin returns to the school to see that Jun is nowhere to be found. He primarily assumes that he has run away, but then he notices that Jun tried to solve some practice questions and stopped midway. Gunyap approaches Jimin, telling him exactly where Jun went. Jun finally comes out of the car and faces three gangsters. The man in black finally introduces himself as Jang Ho, the chief scout of the YB family, and tells Jun, still assuming that he is Gammon, that he wishes to recruit him for the next generation of fighters for the White League gang. Jang Ho tells Jun that he must win this challenge to prove himself worthy, and his only goal will be to grab the car key behind the gangsters. Before the fight begins, Jang Ho mentions that the three gangsters are also fresh newbies from the White Lead Gang. The three gangsters, Chang, Guk, and Seo, get ready for Jun to attack them. But Jun gets scared to even come close to them, as he has never fought three people at once. Seeing him scared, 
Jango tries to motivate him by promising to give him the car if he succeeds. He tells Jun that to succeed in life, he doesn't have to study but only needs money and power. Jun gets motivated by the lame speech and goes to attack the gangsters, but he ends up getting beaten half to death. But it's not over for him yet, as Jango reveals that he always knew that Jun was not gammon, so he needs to be punished for lying. He gets ready to use his iron pipe on Jun, but at that moment, Gun Yap and Ju take out the three gangsters and come alongside Gammon to take out Jang Ho next. The Min takes a moment to tell Jun that he has passed the practice test. Going back a few moments earlier, Gun Yap takes Gammon to the place where the white lead gang holds the recruitment tests for their potential gang members. Ju also comes there alone and sees that Gammon is already there. She tells him that she followed Jun's car, thinking something was suspicious, and ended up here. Gun Yap explains that he brought Gammon here thinking he wanted to be a gang member of White Lead, but now he realizes that Gammon only came here to save Jun. Gun Yap tells Jamin that Jun doesn't need to be saved if he came here only to join White Lead. But Gammon thinks otherwise and shows Gun Yap the proof that Jun wants to study. Coming back to the present, Gammon tells Jang Ho that he is the one he is looking for. Jang Ho sees the two others, Ju Wu and Gun Yap and assumes that they are all here to save Jun, he calls the three of them a bunch of weaklings for thinking they can just come here and save Jun, he proceeds to smash his iron pipe on Jun to show them that he is not here to play any games. Then he steps on Jun to insult him more. So Gamin and Gun Yap get mad and rush towards him. But two gangsters from before ambush them and smack their heads together. The third gangster goes straight to punch Ji Wu, but she easily dodges it as she is a professional judo player and slams him hard on the ground. Meanwhile, the long-haired emo gangster uses a wooden bat against Gun Yap, but he too successfully dodges every swing thrown at him. Gun Yap wears his hoodie to give him a superpower, who knows? And then finds a gap to one-punch Ko, the emo gangster. He reveals that he only wore a hoodie to throw off the emo gangster and secretly put on his signature weapon, Brass Knuckles. It's now Gaiman's turn to show his skills, and in front of him stands the best of the three gangsters. The third gangster brings out a blade cutter to stab Gaiman, but he easily throws away his weapon using the piece of paper in his hands. He then proceeds to use Bruce Lee's signature move, the one-inch punch, to send the gangster flying away. Right after, Gaiman goes for Jang Ho, but this time he has met his match. Jang Ho blocks Jiamin's punch perfectly, which makes Gaiman realize that he is strong. Gun Yup can't believe that Jang Ho blocked a monster like Damon's fist, but there is still more coming from Jang Ho to show the true power of the White Lead Gang. Jang Ho swings his iron pipe on Gammon, smashing him to the ground while still stepping on Jun Juwu and Gun Yap come to help Gamin. But they are no match against Jang Ho. Jang Ho even claims that he can beat the three of them without even lifting a finger and thinks that they have no talent at all. He lights up a cigarette, thinking Gammon is not worth being scouted. But then Gammon stands up again to go for a surprise attack on Jang Ho. Jang Ho sees it coming and uses his right foot for an overhead kick to slam Gamin away again. Jang Ho then notices that Gamin is feeling relieved even in this situation and realizes that he has moved away from Jun So, he again steps on Jun, and that infuriates Gamin. Jang Ho respects Gamin's loyalty towards Jun and steps away, saying that he likes how loyal Ganin's gang is. Gamin clears up Jang Ho's misunderstandings and explains that they are not in a gang, but in a supportive group. Gamin takes his jacket off, implying that he is about to get serious, and takes his idol, Bruce Lee's stance. Gamin wonders if he should use his actual powers but thinks it's okay because he's a gangster. Meanwhile, at the Incheon Central Police Station, Taemin scours through the documents to find a specific paper to use against the White Lead Gang. His colleague, Kwong, asks if he is furious because of the student, Hanwol. The two officers go to the rooftop to calm themselves, and there Juan reminds Taemin that it's not his department's job to handle high schoolers. But Taemin can't back down, as he considers this case to be included in his Women and Children Affairs Department after the report he received from Ms. Lee. Taemin reveals that he wants to arrest the head of the White League gang because of his son Hanwell's doings. Taemin explains that when he took Hanwell to the police station, the head officer sent him back immediately. So he believes that the police force is corrupted to its core. Taemin notices two students from Hanwell's school, Si Yen and Hee Won, heading inside the police station, and judging by their expressions, he realizes that they are in trouble. Taemin lights up a cigarette and realizes that he needs to have a connection with a higher-up officer to get a lead on Hanwell in order to arrest him. But it seems there isn't any, 
So Taman thinks of getting a hold of a member of the White League gang who has enough authority, but catching them won't be easy. So he thinks of putting a mole inside the White League gang. Jun remembers when his old friend Anti left him alone to join the White League gang. He asked Anti about the promise that they made to each other that they would grow strong together and not let anyone look down on them. But Anti never considered him a friend or a rival, as he thought himself better than him. Jun finally regains consciousness, and judging by the fact that he is still here, he initially thinks that Gamin and everyone else abandoned him after seeing a real thug like Jang Ho. But he is proven wrong as he sees Gamin punching Jang Ho away. After taking that punch, Jang Ho realizes that Gamin is worth a shot and asks him why he is defending a worthless boy like Jun, even when he pretended to be him and took the exam. Jun admits that Jang Ho's right and knows that he doesn't deserve Jimin's help. He doesn't want to admit it, but he was enticed by the car for a moment, so he thinks that it would be better for Gamin to abandon him. But Gamin thinks otherwise. A flashback shows Gamin using a once-inch punch on his training partner, Bruce Lee, or as he calls him, his uncle. His uncle asks him why he is hitting so hard today. So Gamin shows that he has failed the exam and feels upset because no matter how much he studies, his grades don't go up. His uncle told him to be true to his true passion if he wanted to succeed. He tells him that he already succeeded in becoming strong because he wanted to defeat his uncle. He should now look for other things to keep himself going. Gamin now considers Jun his rival because he also wants to be strong and smart like Gamin, and that keeps him going. Gamin uses his uncle's forbidden tactics against Jang Ho to overpower him. He uses the first tactic that takes away the opponent's breath with one merciless punch, and that is the one-inch punch. This punch's impact is so heavy that Jango gets sent flying and crashes onto the car. Jun is amazed to see Gamin's true power and is extremely happy that he considered him his rival. Gamin then detains the three gangsters using a rope and goes to end Jango, but he is already knocked unconscious. The battle ends and Gamin feels relieved as now he has five people in his study group. He looks forward to studying now that everything's over but the car's engine starts suddenly and charges towards both Gamin and Jun. A few moments earlier, both Jiwoo and Gunyat regained consciousness. Gunyat wondered how someone the same age as him could be so much stronger than him. He wished to be like him so that he could save his mom in the incident. Jiwoo recognized him, calling him a man-child, and asked him what he was doing there. Gunyap explained that he wanted to ask Jang Ho something and thought Gamin would be a good ally to knock him down but he didn't expect that Gamin would beat Jang Ho all alone. Suddenly, the car starts to move towards Gamin and Jun, and Jun sees that inside the car, his ex-friend and rival Anti is there, so he instinctively pushes Gamin away to at least save him. Gamin also grabs him by the hand and saves him from getting hit by the car. But it's not over yet, as Anti turns the car around again. Gun Yup explains that this is not just a threat, and the guy inside, Anti, really wants to run them over. Anti from the car asks Gamin if he wants to become a gangster and promises to make him a big part of the White Lee family. Anti tries to entice Gamin by giving him more luxurious lifestyle offers, but Gamin tells him that he and his study group only want to go to college. Anti realizes that when Gamin said he was a part of a study group, he wasn't joking. So he takes back his offer and decides to leave. But then he recognizes Gunyap and asks him why he is going to the same school where his mother was brutally murdered. Gamin realizes that Gunyap's mother was a teacher here, which explains why he tried to protect another teacher, Ms. Lee. Antai keeps provoking Gunyap by saying he should get his revenge rather than study. Antai even goes on to say that the murderer of his mom did all that for nothing, as Gunyap is still a wimp. Gunyap realizes that Antai knows about his mom's murderer, but he can't catch up to a running car. At that very moment, Siyan and Hyun come there with the police officer Taman and see Anti escaping the place with the car. Gunyap takes Officer Taman's bike and immediately chases after Anti at full speed to catch him. He even cuts through the traffic lights to catch up to him, but Sanjin Bang, the White League gang's director, catches him midway and knocks him off the bike. Gunyap completely loses his sanity in rage and gets ready to murder Sanjin for blocking his way. A few moments earlier, Sangin tried calling Zhou Wang while crossing the street, but he didn't pick up the call. Sangin recalled how much Zhou Wang has changed after being brutally beaten during the school fire incident. He quit school and even stopped showing his face in public because of the humiliation that was caused by Gamin. On top of that, Zhou Wang was ambushed and brutally beaten by Gunyab, who was masked but easily recognizable. 
Learning that Gunyap was behind Zhao Wang's sorry condition, Sangin decided to murder him. But Zhao Wang told him to leave him be, as he could predict that Gunyap would stir up a lot of trouble anyway and think he would end up dying because of Hanwol. But Sangin doesn't like Hanwol, so he still decided to take revenge on behalf of Zhao Wang. When he was crossing the street, he saw Gunyap on the bike and started chasing him. That made Sangin end up where he is right now. Sangin sees the pure hatred in Gunyap's eyes and realizes that he has lost himself in vengeance. Gunyap blindly attacks Sangin in rage, but he is no gammon. He starts to get beaten up by Sangin. Gunyap looks for a way to throw off Sangin and sees some trash bags behind him. Sangin tells Gunyap about the news that concluded his mother's murder was a drunken accident and that she died for no reason. But Gunyap doesn't believe that and tells Sangin that she was a victim of the White League Gang's revenge. He throws a trash bag at Sangin and then almost blinds him by cutting his eyes with a broken can. While Sangin is still hurting over his eyes, Gunyap tries getting back on the bike, but then he notices that the keys have gone missing. Sangin gets a text message from the White League group chat from Auntie about what happened with Jang Ho and tells him that he is being chased by a person with a black bike. Sangin realizes that Gunyap is the one who is chasing Anti. He then wonders why Gunyap is involved in every white lead incident and figures out that he has planted a spy. He captures Gunyap and takes him away to make him confess everything about the spy. The pedestrians report the fight to the local police, all while a fatty secretly plots a plan and picks up the bike's key. Gamin takes his leave from his friends and runs into the fatty, Do Hun, who asks for his help to save Gunyap. The police officer Taemin arrests the three gangsters. Gamin requests Taemin to send more men after Gunyap as a backup. But Taemin can't do that, as he believes that Gunyap wouldn't want the police to be involved in his personal matters. Taemin learns that Gamin took out all those mobsters alone, including one of the cruelest members of the white lead gang, Jang Ho. He gets shocked at how a mere high schooler can be so strong and skilled. But thanks to him, Taemin has now caught one of the higher ups of the white lead gang. He decides to give them a little lesson and tells Gamin and Jiwoo that they have both committed assault and therefore can be arrested for it. However, he lets them go as the authorities aren't on duty in this area. He can't speak in detail, but he gives them clues that the police force is covering up for the White League gang. He can neither help them nor arrest them. He apologizes to them as his hands are tied because of the authorities, but he still gives Gam his card to call him any time that he needs his help. Before Taemin leaves, he reminds the students to study hard and tells Jimin that even though he's strong, he will one day need the harsh fist of a civil servant. While on the way to the police station, Taemin calls Ms. Lee to ask if she knows a kid named Gunyap. He learns that it's the case of the teacher who got murdered and that Gunyap is her son. He then tells Ms. Lee that the leader of the study group at Yusung Tech caught the White League gang monster that was trying to recruit newbies from there. Ms. Lee doesn't believe it but Taemin assures her that it's the truth. He promises her to look more into Hanwol and then wonders how Gamin can be so strong. He cannot imagine that there's a study group in a school full of gangsters in hopes that the school will change one day with the help of her and her students. Meanwhile, the study group is finally relieved that everything ended well and Gamin takes his leave. That's when Dohan approaches him and tells him that he is one of the lackeys of Jujin and that he got beaten by Gamin in the student council room. But Dohun promises Gaemin that he is not a bad guy and asks for his help to save Gunyap. He promises to explain everything on the way, but Jemin's mom calls him and scolds him for being late. She warns him that if he doesn't come back home right now, she will get him transferred. It's up to Gaemin to be an obedient boy or save his friend. Meanwhile, Sangin brings Gunyap to his base and ties him up in a chair. He decides to torture Gunyap to make him say who the spy is. Anti comes there and reveals that he has sent one of his lackeys named Dohun to lure Gammon here so that they can end him and Gunyap at once. Anti asks Gunyap if he thinks he is Detective Conan as he tries to meddle in the White League gang's affairs every time he tries to find his mom's murderer. He then tells him that he will reunite him with his mom by murdering him. Suddenly, someone breaks the front door and comes in. But it's not Gammon, rather it's the police officer Taemin, because Gammon is an obedient boy who listens to what his mother tells him. Meanwhile, at the police station, Officer Kwong looks for Officer Taemin, as they have just gotten their hands on someone from the White League gang. He wonders where Officer Taemin disappeared to, even at such a crucial time. Officer Park realizes that Taemin went to help Gimin because of something, but he decides not to tell Wong about it. Back at the White League gang's lair, 
Taemin starts to attack the gangsters only with his fists. Sanjin and Antai escape the room through the back door and leave Gunny out behind, as they think they shouldn't interfere with adult fights. Antai mentions that Taemin is on Hanwol's blacklist of opponents, so that gives them more reason not to interfere. Because Taemin is on Hanwol's blacklist, it means he is strong, but Sango has never heard of him. Antai explains that Taemin is the new officer in town and even has four stars on Hanwol's list. Sango wonders what four stars represent and remembers that a teacher named Jungwa, possibly Gunyop's mother, also had four stars on her list. Antai wonders how the cops learned about this place and gets suspicious, thinking Sango is a spy. In the meantime, Taemin defeats all the gangsters single-handedly and tells Gunyop that he should not steal a cop's bike ever again. Taemin tells Gunyop that he knows everything about him and that he was one of the many cops who found his mother's dead body at the school. Although Taemin came there by accident while tracking down the white lead gang under the Mapo District Police, he remembers everything because he saw Gunyop covered in blood and the hatred in his eyes. He can never forget that look. Gunyop doesn't say a single word and starts to leave while limping. Taemin realizes that Gunyop doesn't want to associate with the police after going through such a tragedy and worries that his tragedy will continue. Gunyop then returns home to find his father waiting for him at the table. His father sees that Gunyop is hurt, but he says he's completely fine and gives him important information regarding his late mother. Meanwhile, Gimin is studying hard at home. He gets a text from Officer Taemin saying that Gunyap went home, so he feels relieved. Then he notices that Soyeon has made a study group chat and has invited him, Juwoo, Jun, and Hyun into that group. Gimin enters the group chat and sees that everyone is worried because Jun is not joining. He is busy reminiscing about the time when he was still friends with Antai. He moves on, as he has new friends who care for him, and finally joins the group chat. Policeman Taemin has a good feeling about Gimin and his study group, and feels that if Gunyap gets close to them, his heart full of hatred will gain some love. Hanwol learns that Gammon has beaten Jang Ho and realizes at this rate, the school might turn into a place where the students can focus on studying. But he can't let that happen, as he needs to make sure the school always remains the worst of the worst. So he targets Ms. Lee and gives her a four-star rating just like he did a year ago to Gunyap's mom. One week goes by after these events. The study group, at first, tried to make it a goal to study for three hours every day, and everyone tried their best to stick with it. Some of them failed to achieve their goals, so an idea was proposed to find the students as a punishment for slacking off. Being the leader of the group, Gammon must come up with how much to charge for punishment fees and everything else, including the scope of their studies and what to share, etc. He realizes quickly that it is not easy to run a study group, even though he has dreaded it for so long. He decides to seek help from Ms. Lee. On his way to school, Ju Jin, with his broken hand, calls Jimin to tell him that he can't come to school without his winter uniform and tells him to go back home and get it. Ever since Ju Jin got his hand broken by Ju Wu, he has started to abuse his student council president powers to bother Gammon every morning. Gamin can't go home as he will be late to school, but he has no option but to comply, because if he doesn't listen to the student council president, he will get reported to the dean. Ms. Lee overhears them and reminds Ju Jin of the correct rules and tells him that it's fine if Gamin doesn't wear a sweater as winter has just ended. So Ju Jin lets them go, as she also saved him from getting stabbed. It's the first day of Ms. Lee's glorious return to the school, and she feels great. She even jokes with Gamin about being stabbed, but Gaiman tells her that she should be careful from now on. She understands and restarts her plan to form a study group. She hands the principal the paper, showing him that they have five members, so he approves of the study group and gives her the funds to run the group. Before she goes, the principal asks her about Hayonu, and she tells him that he was taken to the juvenile hall and kept the entire incident private from the media at the request of the principal. He thanks her for doing so and is glad that everything is okay. Ms. Lee tells the principal to look at the back page of her study group form, and after he reads it, he begins to loudly yell at her. Jun sees the usually calm principal screaming at Ms. Lee, and almost gets scared as she comes out of the staff room in rage. Apparently, Ms. Lee is trying to get Hannibal expelled by creating a student trial committee as well. Of course, the principal rejects her proposal, but not because he doesn't want to expel Hanwol. But Gunyop's mother came up with the same idea too and got murdered for it. Getting no help from the principal, Ms. Lee goes in front of the research lab for education to get help from another person. Meanwhile, Gammon enters the classroom and sees that everyone is giving him an odd look. He thinks that he has become an outcast, 
but Sehan corrects him by saying that he has become the top of the food chain in his class, and everyone is wary of him. His classmates even think that Gammon is the biggest bully and will beat anyone randomly. Seeing him talk with Sehan, they even think that he is Gammon's latest victim of bullying, but Hunje, the best friend of Hayonu, doesn't think of Gammon as a bad guy. He goes off for a smoke before the class starts, and his friends tag along too. Hunje thinks that the school has become boring ever since Hayonu has gone to Juvenile Hall, but it's not that bad as that would help the class pass the midterm exams. While he is still lost in his thoughts, suddenly, someone mysteriously attacks Hunja. Meanwhile, Ms. Lee proposes the idea of opening a trial committee to expel Hanwol from the school to the candidate for the next principal, Mr. Jachel Jung. She had no other choice but to try to convince him because he is the only one who can stand against the current principal. Jachel explains that even though she is full of passion and conviction, that doesn't mean she is worthy enough to get help from him. Rather, he wants results from her and asks her what she has accomplished at this school. Since she has done nothing except open a study group, there's not much he can do for her. Going back to Gaiman's class, one of the bullies who owe money to Hayonyu starts beating Hunja as he thinks his best friend should also pay the debts. Gaiman tries to help him out, but Seiyan stops him, saying he will just rile those people up and end up getting expelled. Siyun reveals that the guy in white is the most hated bully of the school and is also good at studying Homan. He's a freshman valedictorian, and before he enrolled, he already had four practical certifications, which makes him a mechanical genius. He's the hope of using tech. On the other side, Vice President Jekyll tells Ms. Lee that if she succeeds in producing one top student from her study group in the midterm exam, he will consider using his power to start a trial committee against Hanwol. She accepts his offer. Even after hearing what Siyun said, Gammon goes to stop Homan because he's afraid of nothing except his mother. Because he's an obedient boy. Seeing Gammon raise his fists, Homan purposely tries to provoke him, saying Juhu is a dirty girl and the twins are trash. But Gammon keeps his composure at the last moment, as he knows Homan has his back covered by the principal. Later, Ms. Lee enters the study group hall and sees that Gammon is the most determined to study out of the five of them. Gamin is still mad at Homan because of his ego for being the top student. He decides to get the first place in the midterms. Ms. Lee decides to help him, as they have the same goal. But before that, she shows everyone what their grades are to make their positions more transparent. It seems Zhuwu, Jun, and Hyun have low grades, as they are ranked 180, 132, and 162 out of the 220 students. Whereas Gamin is the worst one out of them all, placing himself in the 217th position out of 220 students. But the most surprising fact is that Seiyan is ranked third in the entire school, which makes him the smartest amongst them. Ms. Lee thinks that she should focus on Seiyan rather than Gamin. After ranking everyone, Ms. Lee tells them that everyone except Seiyan is low ranked. Also, it's close to impossible to raise their grades in such a short period of time. Gamin decides to put in serious effort to produce a miracle but Ms. Lee makes it clear that there is no such thing as miracles when it comes to grades. Even if he were to study super hard, he wouldn't be able to move up to first place. Gemin remembers when Ms. Lee told him that anything was possible when she was his private tutor. He gets upset that she is not so motivating anymore. Before Gemin loses all his confidence, Ms. Lee explains that miracles are possible here because this is not a regular school. There are still 20 days left before the midterm exams. She tells them to listen to everything she says if they want to top the midterms. She gives them a big lecture on how to raise their GPAs, and now it's up to them to do the hard work. Ms. Lee knows that out of the five of them, Sayin has the highest chance to top the midterms, and that gives her hope to expel Hanwol. Speaking of Sayin, he leaves earlier as his dad is calling for him. Gimin suddenly remembers that Sayin once told him that his family didn't want him to study. He takes his leave from them. Apparently, Sayan's dad calls him to a construction site every day after school. His dad is an alcoholic who doesn't want him to study as he can no longer pay for his tuition and loans. While walking towards the construction site, Homan sees Sayan bullying someone else and calls him to make things worse. Hyun conveniently also shows up there to make things even worse for both. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give a like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.